Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated. And I want to say thank you to everybody that subscribed and share the video and comment. I really do appreciate it. So let's talk power. Season 4, Episode 7. We have James St. Patrick on the subway like a normal human being. You know, he don't have an Uber. He don't have a fancy car. He's back to the beginning, kind of. <clears throat> like starting over and you know Tariq is sitting there with a stone cold face on like trying to comprehend everything that happened and it looks like Tariq is be is getting hard he's getting close to being a gangster and he ain't gonna trust nobody and he ain't gonna be a snitch that's for number one Tariq do not respect anyone that snitches at all so we are going to see Tariq develop in a character because a gangster character in some ways and shape and form because he learned from Tommy Cannon his father ghost and his mother Tasha so anyways James St. Patrick is looking around the subway he's seeing everybody being normal he's kind of curious of people but then at the same time he see a father and son together and him and his son don't have that relationship because his son was able to be kidnapped and and be with Cannon and nobody even knew it was under his nose like he didn't know what was even going on so he knows that he's slipping and he's messing up and he got to get his family back together at least that's what he should be focusing on because his family is really the one that can bring him down in my opinion and so he looks over to Tariq, he sees blood on Tariq's shirt, he covers it up, you know, he went from the street crime to the white collar crime, to me that's where, you know, the blood, you know, stain on Tariq means, and also it's a stain, like Tariq has been damaged, Tariq has been stained with Ghost's lifestyle, and how Ghost didn't take care of business with Cannon, which backfired on him now, and so anyways... Tommy goes up to his stash spot. He finds out he's been robbed. You know, he uh, Brim tells him that he's been robbed, and it was Ghost, and it was Cannon. And, you know, Tommy's like, I can't believe Cannon's alive. Cannon's alive? What? And he was like, damn. And so Brim is like, Marcus got killed, too. He's like, Tommy don't even care. He's like, he can't believe this shit. And so once he unties Brim, um, Brim's phone is ringing, and it's Ghost. And Ghost is like, yo, I need to talk to you. Tommy's like, what the fuck happened? What happened? What the fuck, Ghost? And he was like, yo, Tariq is in trouble. So it's like, you know, um, Jamie knew saying Tariq was going to calm Tommy down because it seemed like Tommy does want to be a father. Tommy can be a good father. And Tommy's almost being a father like to Tariq or whatever. So he calms down. And, you know, Ghost was like, yo, meet me over here on 3rd Street or whatever. And so, you know, Tommy goes to meet him over there. Tariq instantly runs into his hands and hug, I mean, arms and hug Tommy and hold on to him. And Tommy's like, what happened? What's going on? What happened? What happened? And so Ghost is like, you know, Cannon had, you know, Tariq or whatever. So it's just like, yo. And so, and so he also tells, you know, Tommy that, you know, Cannon shot Jukebox to save Tariq's life or whatever. And Tommy was like, I can't believe this. And he's telling, you know, Tariq that you're safe. Tariq go sit in the car or whatever. And so Tariq is listening to the conversation that Ghost and um, Tommy is having. And Tommy was like, oh, and Tommy's like, yo, I understand. Tasha was right now and all this other stuff. And so she was like, yeah. so he was so, you know, Ghost is like, what do you mean Tasha was right? He was like, yo, we had a conversation. Tasha told me that, you know, somebody sent a ransom um, picture to her and it, it had Tariq all passed out and an arm around him and the arm was crispy. Okay, I got you that you said crispy, Tommy. And so he was like, the arm was um, um, crispy. It was like, it happened right when you got locked up. You know, Tariq disappeared. He went missing, but came right back. And Tasha was asking me, is that Cannon's arm? And I told her, nah, it wasn't Cannon's arm. So Tasha was actually right. So this also goes, this is also going to be sticking to Tommy's head that, you know, Tasha should be knowing what she be talking about. And she'd be right half the time. And she's loyal more than she can say to Ghost. And, and also Tommy's realizing that Tasha ain't telling Ghost everything. That their marriage ain't A1 like it used to be. Of course not, because Angela entered the situation. So anyways... You know, um, so Ghost tells, you know, um, Tommy everything that happened with Tariq and all this other stuff. And so Tommy's like, I thought, you know, um, Cannon was dead. You set him on fire and all this stuff. And, and you know, um, Jamie was like, well, he par he partially burnt. And so, you know, Jamie was like, yo, he was with, you know, Jukebox. He was like, and so Tommy was like, that crazy bitch? I was like, yep, yep, yep. And so, but he does let Tommy know that Cannon saved Tariq's life and, and all that other good stuff. And so, you know, Tommy was like, yo, if it was anybody else, you'll be dead. Luckily, it was Tariq was there with Ghost because he's like, yo, nobody robs Tommy and get away with it. We see what Tommy do when people cross him. He does not let you get away. He will get you. So anyways, 
uh, Tariq is looking and he's listening to everything. And so then Tommy goes up to Tariq and asks Tariq, like, yo, um, did Dre know anything about this? How did you meet um um, did he know that you was hanging out with Ken and all, all this other stuff? And so Tariq was like, nah, he didn't know. You know, I lied to him. I told him I was here. I told him I was there. But nah, he didn't know anything. So Tommy kind of believes him, kind of not or whatever. But Tariq is keeping his mouth closed because he wants to find out more information. He's being smart. He's being like his father. Look, listen, and learn, and be quiet. And like Cannon, sitting around watching, Tasha watching and listening, and then execute your plan. So he's learning to be a top dog. He's, he's in the making of being a gangsta so anyways um it's mark it's mark um sent it's mark john marks um sax and it's angela and it's um sandoval or whatever and so you know um john marks is like yo you guys are still spending and we're reviewing your files and everything to find out what happened with the dismissal of the St. Patrick case and the debacle and everything. So Mark was like, I think you guys need to start um, putting out your resumes, do something, start polishing up your resume because all of you are going to be fired. And then Sandoval says, yo, it was, you know, Angela that torpedoed the case. So you see how the FBI agents are, you know, going against each other and they're having an uh, internal conflict just like, you know, Ghost has been having an internal conflict with his crew because of Dre. He doesn't know what Dre's doing he didn't know Cannon was around and like they don't all know the same information so they're all having problems basically what it seems and it seems like all their problems are internal and not taking care of the past in my opinion so anyways Angela was like um you did you deserve to be suspended too um John Marks because you was the captain of the motherfucking ship and John Marks was like yes but I saved myself for letting them know that I didn't know prior instances and prior things that was going on that you motherfuckers was doing on the low so anyways and i didn't know i didn't have no knowledge of anything so anyways um sandoval was like S sandoval asked you know john mark so what's gonna happen with the dismissal of the john of uh, james st patrick's case since it was dismissed without any prejudice and so you know john mark is like well we're gonna have to call somebody and find somebody and find out who killed um you know um knox greg knox or whatever and also you know, if he was, if he's the mole, he's the mole, but there, there's no excuses. There's no nothing. I'm going to take, I'm going to find out who killed Greg, Greg Knox or whatever. And so, you know, John Marks is like telling them like, yo, you don't got no access to nothing. You can't see your files. You can't see the data. You can't get in the system. And he was like, yo, so I think you guys should go work in the private sector. Better yet, do any of you guys need your parking validated? Ooh, and only person that is not fired is, you know, um, Greg Donovan. He's still, he's on the desk or whatever. So then we get to Tariq. So then we get to Tariq gets home. Tasha's yelling at Tariq, where you been? And all this other stuff. And so um, Tariq instantly said, what happened to Sean? What happened to Sean? And Tasha was like, what you mean what happened to Sean? And so then that's when Ghost jumped in and was like, yo, Tariq was kidnapped by Cannon. And so she was like, oh, God. And, and so, and, you know, um, Ghost said, apparently it wasn't the first time, motherfucker. You didn't tell me the truth. So them keeping secrets from each other and not... T telling what's going on so this is another surprise because ghost would have been looking out for his son more and making sure that his kids was at home when he first got out of jail if he knew Tariq was uh, there was a tempted r ransom on Tariq or whatever so Tasha dropped the the the, the ball on that situation so did Tommy. They should have been, uh, how they watch people and stalk people, they should have been watching and seeing everywhere Tariq was going like they do everybody else. But they should have been doing internal, internal system, internal in their family, the chain of command and stuff like that. Family comes first. So anyways, it's like um, um, Ghost and Tasha are not paying attention to their kids. And ultimately, their kids are going to be the ones that can destroy them because now they know their parents are lying and no good and they're going to believe anybody that comes at them telling them some negative shit because you know right now Tariq doesn't believe Cannon is wrong he believes his father's wrong because his father put Cannon in jail for 10 years you know what I'm saying <laughs> so anyways um so then you know Tariq goes to his room, Tasha, and, you know, um, ghosts are arguing in the closet. You know, Raina, she comes, she can listen, she's listening on to the conversation because she's about to go to school. And, you know, Simon Stern's downstairs waiting to come up. And so Tasha and ghosts are arguing, talking about, like, Tasha was like, if you would have killed Cannon, like I told you 10 years ago, we wouldn't have this problem. Then ghost goes, ghost goes, well, I know, I should have killed him, I messed up, I should have killed him, or whatever. So, um, 
Raina is listening to this. And then her parents are going to end up lying to her. So she's not going to believe them. So anyways, Tasha, Tasha was like, you know, um, you went to jail, ghost. You wasn't around. You wasn't here. So I had to do everything to try to get the bail money, try to get you out of jail, try to do this, try to do that, keep the family together. And But, you know, I couldn't do it all. And Tasha was like, um, I... You, Tasha was like, yo, I was dealing with everything. I couldn't be dealing with your lying son. All he turns him, all he does is lie to me all the time. That's what, you know, you got arrested because you was dipping your dick, dicking your dick. You was dipping your dick in that fed bitch. I like that. She was like, you was dipping your dick in that fed bitch. That's why we got these problems. And you left your family. And then Ghost goes, I did not leave my family. I left you. And so when Ghost says that to Tasha, that gave Tasha the comforting uh, feeling to go sleep and go be with you know who um terry silver because she's like yo you left me that's right you didn't leave the family you left me you didn't want me no more and so now this gives her the opportunity to do something that she wanted to do was sleep with you know who terry silver they was knocking boots <laughs> so anyways um Raina hears all this stuff she hears everything that's going on and ghost was like <laughs> Ghost is like <laughs> Ghost is just like, yeah, you know, you only have one job to do, Tasha, and I was take care of the job. Just one job. She what she mean what do you mean one job? Ghost is totally doing his thing. Raina finally knocks on the door, she runs and she hugs her father. So you can see Raina still got love for her father. A lot of love for her father and she hugs him or whatever and then she tells her father that Simon Stern is down well, some guy downstairs waiting for him or whatever. And so Simon Stern comes upstairs with all his people or whatever, and they tell them that they're going to be doing an interview and they need to remake the house and both of them need to be present. Tasha is getting pissed off. Tasha was like, I don't want to be involved in this interview. I don't want to, I don't want nothing to do with this live prime time political shit interview or whatever. And so then, you know, Simon Stern is like, ghost, you know, she got to do it. And Tasha was like, nah, I'm not doing it. But Tasha, you make this deal with Simon Stern. You went behind ghost back. So now you got to pay the consequences and get down and do the interview. And she does. Ghost was like, oh, my wife is going to do the interview, so don't worry about it, Simon Stern. So Simon Stern is, like, running their family, whatever. And so the lady that's with Simon Stern, she she's feeling ghost because she's that nice penthouse they live in. She wants some of that. Mm. And plus she wants to hook Ghost up with her people because he's, he's valuable for some reason because he got away with killing somebody, but he didn't kill anybody. But he beat the system, so I guess that's why everybody's looking at him like a hero. So anyways, Tommy meets up with Dre, and he points his gun at Dre and was like, yo, did you know Cannon was alive living in New York? And Dre was like, no, Cannon's alive? Cannon's like, I didn't know he was alive. When when Dre did that, when Dre, when Dre said that, I, I believed him in that moment. Then I had to think, yes, he did know Cannon was alive. Dre's a good actor. He's very convincing with, you know, Tommy. And he was like, oh, that means he's going to come after me, son. And so then... Tommy was like, okay, don't play no games with me. I ain't stupid, Dre. Don't play with me. Did you know he was with Jukebox? And so Dre was like, nah, who the fuck is Jukebox? And so, um, which Dre knows. And so anyways, Tommy puts his gun away. And Dre was like, yo, we got another problem. I've been calling um, Julio forever. And he's not picking up the phone or whatever. And his car is sitting over here. So Dre sets up a perfect, a perfect scene for them to, you know, um, find Julio's body. So they find Julio's body. Tommy um, sees that Julio's dead and he looks at his neck. He sees that his tattoo came off. So Tommy was like, yo, the, you know, the, the Totos Locos finally got to, you know, um, to Julio or whatever. And so he's like, damn, they finally, and so he, so then Tommy was like, since they did this, I mean, they don't have no, they ain't scared of me, they don't fear me, and they don't fear Ghost anymore, because Ghost is out the game, so this might be war, and Dre's like, damn, because Dre was like, yo, I'm trying to get war, I'm just trying to be a distributor, and so then, um, <laughs> Dre is like, yo, so, um, What's good? What what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Really? Because with the look on his face, Dre, it's like, what are we going to do? Tommy's bending over Julio's body. So you see, Tommy did care about Julio, but he didn't show it. And he didn't watch over Julio. And he didn't have his cell phone for Julio to call him. So Tommy should know now he can't ever go off the grid. The shit happens when he goes off the grid. He has to be available for his crew all the time, you know, and his people. So anyways... You know, um, Tommy feels like they're sending a message, message, and Dre was like, yo, so what about that distributing, you know, 
you know, can I be the new distributor? And Tommy goes, yo, he the, his body ain't even cold yet. <laughs> he was like, his body ain't even cold yet, son. And so Dre said, what, you want to take ads up on Craigslist? <laughs> or you want to promote me? <laughs> that was a good line. And so, you know, Tommy was like, oh, God, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? So then Tommy was like, okay, set up a meeting with, you know, who, set up a meeting with, you know, the get, the locals gang or whatever. Set up a meeting with them. And kid, you got the job. <laughs> and then, you know, Dre bends down and say to Julio, I want bitch. <laughs> Dre is coming up. He's in, he's in the midst of all the situation. He knows everything that's going on. And if he doesn't know everything that's going on, he's about to know everything that's going on. And right now, he's building his relationship with Tommy. He's getting even closer to Tommy. You know what I'm saying? We haven't seen Dre with Ghost yet. But Ghost don't know that they're running drugs out of Truth Nightclub. But what if the politicians know that Ghost is running drugs out of the nightclub? I don't know. So Ghost don't even know that. So Ghost is still in the dark. They're still keeping secrets from each other. But you see when FBI agents get together, like three of them get together and they stop keeping the secrets and they find out what Sandoval is doing. So basically, Ghost, Tommy, and, you know, Tasha really need to get together and talk and stop keeping secrets from each other and stop keeping secrets from the kids because the secrets that they're keeping ultimately destroy them because it makes the other person react to something that end up messing up their plan, their original plan. So there we go. So anyways, you know... Dre got the job or whatever. <laughs> and so and so Angela Angela um she's she's really thinking that Sandoval doesn't look good in the situation. I think she thinks she trusts Greg. She trusts she knows Mark's um she knows Mike um she knows Sax. She knows Sax is not is not he's just a, a freak, a pervert. But now I think and she's really looking towards Sandoval or whatever. And all that good stuff. So, anyways, we get to Tom, Tommy ends up talking to Ghost and, and was like, "Ghost, um, how come you didn't tell me about Ru Ruaris, whatever, um, that he was wearing a Y and everything? You know, I had to break in his apartment and steal the tape back." And Tommy was like, "You know, um, I heard it from I heard I got all the details from you know who Joe Proctor." And then so Ghost was like, "Okay, so you got the tape back?" Yeah. And so Tommy was like, "Yeah, I got rid of the tape." Tommy was like, "I got um, I got business." with you know the the total local people whatever and so um tommy basically saying you didn't tell me about ruaris i had to kill him and then you got the the fingerprints is left over there at knox house since you didn't tell me that you was trying to set somebody up and put somebody back in jail again you snitch ass um i had to do this and i had to do that and i took care of that business so therefore i'm going to take care of the business with the locals or whatever so you know they killed my boy our boy and i handle that business so don't tell me what to do because i take care of business at the end of the day <laughs> And Tommy's feeling good about himself because he land on his feet. He's about to be distributing in California. You know, he got a good relationship with Jason, the Serbans or whatever the fuck they are. So he's good right now at this at this time and point. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that situation. And so then, you know, so goes so Tommy goes on his way or whatever. And Tasha, you know, talks to Raina, and she still lies to Raina, doesn't tell Raina the truth, and Raina does know the truth, so it makes her look like a liar to, to, to Raina, so it is what it is with that. So, um, you know, um, Sandoval is trying to put the murder and the gun on, um, on, what's his name, on Greg, on Donovan, and he tells that to, you know, um, Sandoval, he tells that to, um, Sax, and Sax was like, yeah, whatever, Sax was like, I don't give a fuck as long as I can get my job back, you know what I mean, Sax don't give a fuck, but he knows that he don't want nobody pointing the finger at him, because he really didn't do nothing, and so anyways, you know, um, Angela, she ends up talking to, um, Donovan, telling Donovan, you're on the desk, and he was like, yeah, and she said, so you got access to information, he was like, I think we need to get the, get the cameras back to security, security tape and find out where everybody was at and, f and just see if there's something else there so donovan is like what if they you know um switch the tapes out or did this or cut the tapes or edit tapes and angela was saying no they can't do it they didn't have enough time you fucking idiot we can look at the tapes we can see where everybody's at, where everybody was at when the search had begun so then um greg donovan is like i don't know whatever so then you know angela she leaves she was like whatever so anyways, we get Tasha and Terry. They're talking. He was like, yo, I got your back. I'll be there with you or whatever. I'm doing it for you and not for ghosts. And so Tasha's like, okay, baby. 
So anyways, then Ghost meets up with Joe Proctor and was like, yo, I heard you told Tommy about Ruiz, the tape, and all this other bullshit, and Tommy's, and Tommy, you know, ambushed me, all this other bullshit, and he had the upper hand on me, and I couldn't say shit because I was wrong, and so Joe Proctor was like, yeah, you know, there's nothing I can do, I can't control Tommy, he's a beast, he's a fucking animal, he's a monster, he's gonna be the one that, that's gonna bring us all down and destroy us, or whatever, and he was like, so what happened with all this other shit with Bailey? And Blase in the third in the tapes. And he was like, yo, Tommy killed the Homeland Security guy. And so Ghost is like, fuck, he killed a Homeland Security agent. And he was like, yeah. And then he killed him right in my motherfucking apartment. And so he was like, Ghost is like, god damn. Ghost was like, so, you know, Joe's like, everything's destroyed. And all this other stuff. But, you know, Tommy told Ghost that um, Joe Proctor destroyed everything. And got rid of the body. And, and you know ghosts don't like that so anyways um joe said he had his apartment clean and um ghost is like keep having your apartment clean so right now ghost is like i think ghost is thinking about taking out joe proctor or getting to the bottom of where the evidence is at and where the body is at because if he can't find that he's gonna he has to get that to make sure that it never comes up again because it was kind of weird that dre didn't um Get, move the body or whatever like bury where you know julio was never found he made sure the body was found and he found it together with tommy i would think that dre and the gang totals totals locals would want to bury the body but i guess dre couldn't he wanted the body to be there so he can quickly come distributor so dre is going to be working along with this other gang on the low and like he was working with cannon on the low until it blows up in his motherfucking face again so anyways you know um when that when so that goes down or whatever and so ghost is like what the fuck man <laughs> and so anyways now tommy um meets up with you know the gangster y yuri that yuri or whatever that killed suppose that had killed you know julio or whatever and dre's there and dre trying to have this this serious face on like he had nothing involved and so you know yuri had some guy sitting there like hey this is the guy that took out julio and so tommy's like nah this shit ain't happened this little pup can't take out my boy there's no fucking way and so he was like well this dude said he was he would offer to kill you too as well so tommy put the bullet in the dude's head and tommy's not believing what the fuck they saying he's not buying what they selling he ain't buying it at all one thing dude tommy Tommy do know the streets and street shit. So anyways, um, Tommy was like, nah, this ain't enough. This ain't enough for killing my boy. And he was like, since you guys killed my boy, you know what I want? And he's pointing the gun at, you know, Yuri or whatever. And he was like, yo, I want the corners back that we gave you. And so Yuri was like, nah, nah, that can't happen. I, we ain't giving you the corners back. And then, um... Tommy was like, yo, I want to talk to your boss. And then Yuri's like, no, you can't talk to our boss because, you know, they're fucking crazy. They're butchers and all this other stuff. And because, you know, Tommy was like, yo, I want to talk to who's upstairs. I, you know, I'm tired of dealing with you, little motherfucker. You, you're worthless. <laughs> and so um, and so Tommy was like, well, you know what? I'll shoot you in your face right now. And then your boss will come looking for me. Then once they come looking for me, I'll be able to talk to him. So it's up to you. If you want, if you want, I'll talk to them any, I'll talk to them either way, but it matters whether you are alive or not. You might not be alive or whatever. And so then, you know, Yuri, he looks at Dre and I guess he was like, okay, whatever. So now Dre and Yuri feel like, damn, we fucked up. <laughs> Tommy was like, either fucking way, I'm going to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I could blow your face when they come looking for me. Tommy's the shit. So anyways, um, um, <laughs> so anyways, Tommy walks off. And then, so Yuri says to Dre, you said everything was going to be all right with this kill with killing Julio or whatever. And then, you know, Dre was like, not until you sign your mother, not until you sign your signature on the shit. And, and so Dre's like, I guess we both fucked up. If this starts a war, we're both going to lose. And so anyways, we get Madison. He works, he, he was used to work with Lobos or whatever, and Lobos was going to snitch on him, and he was the agent that was going to snitch. So the big guy, Diego, and his sister, they come in, and they kill, them. they kill Madison, they kill his wife, and they take their baby or whatever to raise. It was some sick motherfuckers, all right? So anyways, so they kill him, boom. So now we know who they are. They worked, they was dealing with Lobos. I guess Lobos was dealing with everybody. So anyways, John Marks. He wants to find out what's going on with Bailey because he has no information. Bailey has disappeared for a week. And then, you know what? He goes to meet up with Joe Proctor. He tells Joe Proctor, like, yo, the last ping from um, 
from what's his name um bailey bailey's phone was right here in front of your house right here in this area so you either tell you got you're gonna tell me either what happened you know you're not you're not tommy and you're not james and patrick's lawyer in a way and they're gonna come look they're gonna come kill you or whatever so if there's anything you got to tell me tell me now and so greg so you know joe proctor's like nah there's nothing I have nothing to do with it. i don't know what you're talking about motherfucker so then after you know john mox takes off guess who's standing in the corner ghost ghost is watching people he should be watching his son like that so anyways ghost is watch um joe proctor so ghost is not going to kill joe proctor until he finds out where all the evidence at what bailey knew and who else bailey told and where the fuck the body is at basically that that's my opinion so anyways um john mox is like yo tell me now Tell me later. But tell me before there's indictment. <laughs> and so then, um, John Marks is talking to, you know, um, Sandoval. And Sandoval is basically throwing Donovan under the bus and everything. Mm-mm-mm. So then we get the so we get we have the interview or whatever the interview view goes well or whatever that they have prime time Tasha forgets to put on her ring and she says it's because I had to pawn it I had to pawn a ring to bail my innocent husband out of jail so they sold the story so anyways um, we see Tommy Tommy goes to meet up with you know Diego and his sister or whatever and they got the baby with them that shit is crazy <laughs> oh man. It's just crazy. But so anyways, but we're going to get back to Angela. Angela and Donovan, they're reviewing the videotapes because Donovan, he walks up into Angela's house. He was like, yo, did you know Sax had, you know, went through the MSC with labels and the hitters that he knew or something about the, the shank and all this other stuff. And he met up with Bailey and all this other stuff. And Bailey's been missing for a week. And Sax is you know sax might be the killer or whatever and so angela was this is a good part that angela says um he's a jerk he's a jerk off in other words he might jerk off over a dead body and everything but he ain't gonna kill nobody he ain't no shooter <laughs> and so anyways they get together and they're getting the information together so then we see um mike sandoval going to greg greg donovan's house to try to kill him but he's not there because he's chilling with angela so anyway um um, so Dre, he, so, so Dre, so Dre and, you know, Tariq, they meet up and talk. And so Tariq is letting, letting us all know that he knows what's going on. He knows his father ain't shit. He was like, yo, I would just, he got, so, you know, Dre was like, why are you going to snitch on me? He was like, cause I want to know the truth. And so Dre, you know, Dre hasn't been real through this whole, to this whole season. He's been lying and manipulating people, but he's, but he's being honest with Dre. I mean, with Tariq. He's being honest with Tariq for sure. So anyways, you know, um, Tariq is asking, you know, Tariq is saying, did my dad um, send Cannon to jail and all this other stuff? And I and my and then he was like, Oh, your dad Jamie Jamie? He was like, No, ghost motherfucker. His name is Ghost. They ran the streets, they sold drugs. My dad killed people. My dad killed his boss, um, Breeze, that they all worked for, that Tommy worked for, that Cannon worked for, because my father didn't want to be in Queens no more and he wanted to take over. And so he's so he killed the boss and he sent, you know, um Cannon to jail. Did my mom have anything to do with it? I mean, did Tommy have anything to do with it? And so then, you know, um, and that's why Cannon wanted me. That's why Cannon came after me because of what my father did to him. And Dre was like, damn, this little motherfucker's smart. I got to watch out for him. He's kind of smarter than me. And so anyways, Dre was like, um, Dre's like, you a smart ass little kid. And, and, and your dad, your dad did set up, you know, um, Cannon, but Tommy had nothing to do with it. Tommy didn't know what was going on. So then Dre was like, yo, did my mom have anything to, did my mom have anything to do with it? And did my mom know whatever? And, um, Dre didn't reply, so basically that's a yes. We didn't see him reply, so basically that's a yes. So anyways, we get Tommy. Tommy meet up with Diego. They still have the baby I was saying earlier. Then uh, some sick motherfuckers. Dre's with Tommy, and Dre's getting all the info that he didn't know, and he's coming up because now he's seeing how Tommy's running and doing the business. So he's learning what Tommy does and everything and, and meeting the people. So he's up there because he is the number one distributor now. So anyways, Tommy meets up with Diego's sister, whatever, and so, 
And so, um, you know, Tommy was like, yeah. So there was like, let's sit down. We have a problem, whatever. Yeah. And he was like, yo, your man killed Julio, my boy. And he was like, isn't Ghost out the game or whatever? So what's the problem? And so um, Tommy goes, you know, when Ronald McDonald died, Dave Thomas didn't go. Dave Thomas didn't go try to uh, run up on, you know, uh, Wendy's or whatever. Or 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 uh, Dave when Dave oh when Dave Thomas died, Ronald McDonald didn't try to go run up on Wendy's and take their spot or whatever. And so the sister was like, "Yo, I don't get this. That was a good. That was a good line. They read a lot of good lines for Tommy." And so the brother Diego was like, "I I understand it. I know what he means or whatever." And so then Diego was like, "So you still working for the Cerebin employers of yours? They told you to ask. They told you to ask for all this or whatever because you know Dre asked for. I mean." Tommy asked for all he wants his corners back that he gave them and he wants six lo total locals corners and he wants to be put and he wants he wants to have access to their port connection to California and he said he will be kicking a percentage back and so that's when Diego was like yo so your Serbian employees they told you to ask for this and you know um Tommy was like no they didn't tell me and Jason and Jason wants me to expand anyway to the west coast so you know, it's 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 all on me or whatever. So now, you know, Dre is getting to learn that the the Serban guy in charge name is J Jason. So, you know, Dre is getting a lot of information which is gonna benefit him in the future. So, anyways, and so you know, Tommy was like, "Yo, I kill Lobos for you," and Dre looks like, "Damn, I didn't know that." And so, so Tommy was like, I killed um, Lobos for you. And I was like, no, you did not kill Lobos. We had him stabbed up in, in jail, blah, blah, Zayn III. And so Tommy was like, nah, no, you didn't. It, it, didn't, it wasn't successful because Lobos ended up surviving and getting away. And he was going to testify on all of you guys. He was gonna and you guys are going to be number one that he was going to testify on. But I, we killed him. We got rid of, we got rid of Lobos because Lobos did make a deal to flip flop and flip on everybody. And you guys were going to be it. And since I killed Lobos, you guys were able to be number one in Mexico with your drug shipment and shit like that then on top of that you guys been able to move breezily and freely around without any problems so you guys what so he was like yo you guys owe me twice and so then it was like yo we need time to think about it and then so he was like don't take too much time then we get Tariq he's drinking lean he's playing his video game or whatever and it's like he's drinking a lean he's thinking about everybody lying to him and putting all the pieces together and he's shooting the game he's getting his aim together because he's gonna probably be a hitter and so ghost comes in or whatever ghost continues to lie to Tariq and Tariq was like you know what all right, you lying ass motherfucker. Get the fuck out of my room. Um, so ghost gets ghost gets ghost gets a call or whatever. So then ghost meets up with Tommy, and um, so we also get Tasha. She's she's singing and her and Terry are connecting. Tasha sings the Whitney Houston song. She did pretty good. So anyways, we get um. So from there, you get um Terry. Terry and Tasha are kind of like, mm, kind of cooking up things. And you see where it's going to go because after Ghost said what he said to Tasha, she's good. She's good with the bullshit. So anyways, um, Angela and, you know, Donovan are looking at the videotape. They see where everybody else is at. And then they notice that Donovan is going up into the office, Ghost's office. And he's the only one that was unsupervised going up there. And then the cameras had turned off. And so... We know what's good. And so also, you know, John Marks is also questioning um, Donovan. I mean, questioning Mike's, um, questioning Sandoval, like, yo, um, everybody is accounted for, right? You saw basically everybody's time's accounted for. Basically, I think kind of like saying, where the fuck were you at? <laughs> so anyways, it's going down. <laughs> So then we get Tasha. Tasha gets a big ring to go to this big publicity meeting or whatever and all this other stuff party they're going to have because the interview went successful and all that other good stuff. So, mm -mm -mm. but Tasha kind of feels good about the ring and then at the same time she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't at all. So Tommy and so then Tommy meets up with Ghost and Ghost is like, yo, you got to call Tereshi. Or whatever, and then you know, you know, um, Tommy's like, "What the fuck? I want with that motherfucker, whatever." He was like, "But you gotta call him because he actually, you know, witnessed me kill somebody or whatever." 
<laughs> but anyways, but before then, Tommy ends up talking to Tariq, and Tommy is not being real. Tommy was like, "Yo, I didn't know anything about Candy being set up," but he was like, "But he didn't mention about his, his their childhood," and he was telling Tariq that, "Yo, your father needs to tell you that," and all this other stuff. And Tariq knows his father's a liar. Now he he's kind of saying Tommy will protect Ghost at all costs and he also thinks that you know he's lying to him as well so tommy was like ken is a bad guy stay away from him and all that other good stuff and so you know Tariq, as tommy's leaving Tariq says i can't tell who's the bad guy anymore i feel you Tariq. <laughs> and and tommy just looks like damn that's some true shit because he asked tommy has he killed anybody they used to sell drugs and you know tommy don't want to say anything to the kids because ghost hasn't been real with them so he ain't gonna tell him everything or whatever so there we go with that bullshit <laughs> so anyways then we get to you know um ghost is at the party or whatever and we see none other than old dog himself lorenz tate oh my god omg i hope to lorenz tate is in the rest of every episode because he's a magnificent wonderful actor anyways but on this show his name is rashid tate so anyways you know ghost is doing all the promotion he has to you know to steal money and be the face of the black community where he gets these loans or whatever. So he meets up. So the lady that interviewed Ghost, you know, is flirting with Ghost or whatever. She was like, yo, I want you to meet a friend of mine. So he's introduced to Rashid Tate. And Tate was like, yo, I'm from Queens. You from Queens. He was like, yo, I know your boy, you know, I know your boy um, Simon Stern and, and Leonard or whatever are trying to get at you. And blah, blah, blah. And they're pushing you to do this. But I think you should invest and see what's good with Queens. You know what I mean? Like, I got a building. I got some property for you to look at. I think that'll be a good look because... You know, um, Lorette, uh, Rashad, Rashad um, Tate is telling, you know, Ghost be careful because they're probably going to do some money laundering and some fucked up shit, paper tracing, bullshit crime, white collar crime. And you don't want to be caught up that they use you as the black guy. And then you're on the line and you're on the hook. So come to Queens where you belong, where you came up from. So basically, it's like it's going back to Ghost needs to take care of a lot of business from back in the day because he needs to take care of shit from back then. So this time, especially with his father. So anyways... Um, he was like, you're investing some property and I believe Lorenz would let Tom, would let Ghost do whatever he needs to do with property and everything and Queens. And he probably knows that Ghost is Ghost and was in is a, was a kingpin at the time, but now Tommy's taking over. So anyways, there we go. So, um, you know, Sandoval tries to kill, you know, um, Greg, but Greg ain't there or whatever. So Angela and so Angela... Um, Greg Donovan, they're looking at the footage so they know that, okay, Sandoval is unaccounted for and he's going up there to the office and knock, 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 who the motherfucker's there? It's none other than Mike, the guy that likes to jerk over dead bodies. He was like, yo, Angela, uh, you know, Mike, I mean, Mike Sandoval thinks that, you know, Greg is the mole, Greg did this, Greg did that, and then Angela opens the door, and Greg is sitting right there, and he was like, well, how much did you hear that? I mean, <laughs> um, Sax is such a motherfucking snake. <laughs> he wants to be on any side that can help him win, because he really just want to watch porn and pick up escorts, basically. <laughs> And that's what John Mark says to him. You know, I put a trace on Bailey. You know, I couldn't put a trace on you because I had to go through all the escort numbers. And so, um, um, Sax says, um, I'm on the internet now. <laughs> Sax is motherfucking pervert. So, anyways, oh my God, Sax is just like Sax is gonna be on anybody's side that help that can help him get his job back and get back to being where he used to be and paying for his hookers. So, anyways, um, so there was a commit come in, Sax. We got to show you something. So now them three are hooking up. Um, Mike Sandoval can't kill all them three, so he really got to get ready to plant some evidence on somebody get somebody. So we'll see what happens with that situation. Because Sandoval is moving. So I think Sandoval is still connected with Diego. I think Sandoval is connected with Diego. I think Diego, when Diego said that we have, you know, uh, somebody in the drug task force that let us know that there is a informant, I think Sandoval is that, Sandoval is that informant, basically, in my opinion. And he's going to probably have to have them to go do something for him. Because he's, he's it's getting close. It's getting close. It's getting, unless they blame it on Bailey. Um, so anyways, but Bailey's dead. 
So, but that can really come back and bite Tommy in the ass. So, anyways, Sasha has her sex scene with Terry. Beautiful love making, black love all day. So, anyways, they're doing their thing, and so then Tommy and Ghost meet up, and then Tommy and then Tommy. So then, you know, Ghost was like, "Yo, Tommy, you gotta call Teresi." And then Tommy's like, "What I gotta call that old motherfucker for? That old gangster motherfucker for? Because he saw me kill a marshal, and basically, um." If you don't call him, he is going to snitch on me, basically. And Tommy said, goes, that wasn't really that smart, huh, Ghost? And so then Ghost said, wasn't really that smart for you to kill a um, Homeland Security agent. And he was like, <laughs> and so, you know, Ghost is like, so we both did some fucked up shit. We both fucked up. We both messed up. We both need each other. We both got to work together. So you see where if they work together, they can help each other. Where you see Greg and, you know, Angela and Greg, you know, Donovan and um, Mike Sachs, they can save their jobs and their careers and they won't have to put out their resumes. So anyways, you know, Ghost is like, where's the evidence? Where's the body? He was like, all that's taken care of, you know. Um, Joe Proctor took care of all that and Blasey the third. And so Ghost is like, oh my God, why would you let him do that time when you slipping? You shouldn't have, you, sh you don't know where the body at. You don't know what this and that, don't you know that um, Joe Proctor's not attorney anymore? He's an accomplice now. He could be using that evidence to set us ass up or, you, or he could have had the recording and everything for an insurance party, uh, insurance policy. But, you know, it was like, we got to fix this. We got to work together. So, so you know, um, what's his name? Ghost is like, yo, call this old motherfucker so he can leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, so, you know, Ghost is like, we both messed up. We both got to do this. And so anyways, John Marco sees, you know, Ghost sees, you know, um, Joe Proctor or whatever. And like I said, Ghost was in the corner watching everything that was going on. And, you know, John Marks warns Joe Proctor that, yo, you either going to go down or you're going to get killed. So you better tell me something. And Joe, and, um. John Marks is looking up in his rearview mirror and looking up. I wonder if he's seen Ghost, but Ghost was in the corner, so Ghost is watching. So Ghost is gonna have to figure out when is he gonna take, is he gonna take Joe Proctor out or not, and he needs to find out where that body's at, where the evidence at, and he ain't gonna play with that bullshit because he ain't going back to jail. Jail was horrible for him. Like he told Tasha, it wasn't easy being behind bars. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> and you know that's another thing. Fucking um, Bailey, the last number that he called was Joe Proctor. Last place his, his phone pinged off was in front of Joe Proctor's area. So that's a close one. And so anyways, you know, Tommy calls um, his father. Tereshi tells, you know, um, Tommy that, that he is his father and all that other good stuff. And he met his mother in Las Vegas. He was a dancer, blah, 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 in a club. And he was like, it's not my fault. And Tommy was like, my father's dead or whatever. He was like, nah, you know, your mom wanted that to happen. Your mom didn't want me to be a part of your life. It wasn't my choice. And so then his father goes, you know, I love redheads. And then, you know, Tommy loves redheads. So then, boom, we find out Tereshi is Tommy Egan's father. So, anyways, peace. I'm out.